Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Friday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and the only downside to me doing this in the car every day is that I have no place to put any props other than my hat. Because I'd love to have had a broom sitting up there somewhere, but I'd been afraid it was going to fall off and hit me in the face while I'm driving. Because the Mets swept the Diamondbacks yesterday, pretty much jumping over them in the standings, getting themselves into position where they're now tied right on the other side of the second wild card, two games behind their lockstep with the Phillies. We're going to talk about yesterday's game, this weekend's series with the Dodgers, and what we have to look forward to over the next 15 days as the season winds to a close and the Mets push for the playoffs. The, uh, the, the team that took the field over these four games uh, in in City Field this week, and um, came out to the to the mound to pitch, and we're in position on the field, and we're standing in the batter's box. That was the team that I envisioned for this season from day one. I envisioned a team that had strong a strong core uh, offense with three or four guys that could legitimately carry them. Um, I, I thought that Robinson Cano was one of them, so I was wrong on that. Um, and I didn't think Wilson Ramos would be as key figure as he's turned out to be. But uh, no matter, I, I, I really saw this team being as capable as the team that put a hurting on the Diamondbacks this week offensively. Um, forgetting about the fact that the Mets pitching was fantastic, and I'll get to that in a minute, the offense was off the charts. Todd Frazier was um, and has been on fire. He hit another home run yesterday. Um, that's three straight games with a home run. Uh, he has uh, has sort of put the team on his back for the last couple of days and said, I-, I got this, all good. You know, he was responsible for driving in three runs on his own in the first game of this series, and he's been hot ever since. And that's what Frazier's been his whole career, a hot, cold player. And he's in one of his hot streaks right now, and the Mets are riding that, and they, as they should. Uh, but, you know, to see to see Juan Lagares do what he did yesterday, um, drive in six runs, hit his first career grand slam just a few moments after Gary reversed, uh, reverse Gary jinxed the uh, the grand slam. I have the, the I'm one of many that catches and picks up on all of Gary's jinxes when he makes some sort of um, fact statement about a player's particular um a performance against a, a certain pitcher or that uh, some rando fact that's like, oh, this person's never hit home run in the sixth inning in his career, and then put home run. Um, and it always seems like Gary's doing those things when the other team is, is, at, is at bat and something bad can happen to the Mets. And for a change, it was the opposite. You know, he said it about Wilmer, or not about Wilmer, sorry, about uh, Ligaris, and he came back um, not a few moments later and hit himself a grand slam for the first time in his career, so... I just thought that was really cool. It was a cool moment for Lagares, who, as they talked about on the broadcast yesterday, has really been a forgotten man here since, almost since he signed his extension with the Mets a few years back. And uh, I don't know what the future holds for Lagares. He is, of course, a free agent after this season. Um, but, you know, when he shows bursts like he did yesterday, and he's playing the defense that we know he can play, and while it's not at the level that it was when he won the Gold Glove, uh, in 2014, it's still pretty damn good. And there, there's just a part of me that, that still thinks that, boy, maybe there's something here. The Mets ought to keep him as the, you know, the fourth outfielder, fifth outfielder, defensive replacement kind of guy. Um, I still have that creeping in the back of my mind all the time. But um, regardless, uh, Lagares had a great day yesterday. And Marcus Stroman had a great day yesterday. And this sort of like the segue to the pitching side of things. Um, the, the entire series, um, the Mets starting pitching was brilliant. Um, the, the weakest link was Zach Wheeler, and um, he was great. <laughs> so, I, sorry, he was very good. Um, Stroman was great yesterday. Stroman kept, uh, kept the team, uh, kept the Diamondbacks off balance. His sinker was working. He had some good defense behind him, um, particularly J.D. Davis and left field made a few Um, circus-type catches. Um, I don't know if they needed to be circus-type catches, but uh, that's how he played them, and he made the outs, and that's what's important. Uh, But, you know, the the Diamondbacks were coming into City Field red hot, and they had lost 
one game on Sunday to the Reds, but then came in here and the Mets just made them look like, as Keith would call uh, them, a second division team. And that's really what they looked like. I mean, the Mets really had their way with the Diamondbacks these past four days. Earned a sweep, earned a six game, uh, earned a return to six games over 500 at 76 and 70. And, you know, now there's, there's what, 16 games left to play? Um, going forward, the Mets find themselves, as I said, in the open, uh, tied in lockstep with the Phillies for um, for the, the the bubble of the second wild card. And the interesting part there is that since um, since Yelich went down with his, his injury and he'll miss the rest of the season, um, the, the Brewers have been playing really well, and they had been before that as well. But they've actually caught the Cubs now and are are tied with them for the second wild card. So. Uh, imagine a scenario, all right, as this, this plays out down the stretch, where the Cubs and Brewers remain tied for the second wild card, and the Mets and Phillies remain tied for um, for uh, third place, and it's just creeping closer and closer and closer, and these teams kind of trade wins back and forth, and the Mets go up, and then the Phillies go up, and then the Cubs go back, and then the Brewers go back. Um, it, it's just going to shape up to be a really exciting 16 days or, or you know, two and a half weeks or so. Um, looking at the schedules of those four teams that I just mentioned, the Brewers by far and away have the easiest schedule ahead of them. Um, they play, uh, they, they, it doesn't hurt them that they, they play in the, the NL Central where they've got two pretty lousy teams, uh, the, the Reds and the Pirates. They play those two teams. They also play Colorado and this weekend they play St. Louis. And that's the hardest series. Um, that's really the last hard series that the, the Brewers have to face them. Uh, so it, it's it's really important that the Mets win and win and win. And they cannot afford to lose at all because Milwaukee's got a, a much easier path as far as strength of schedule goes. Uh, and we'll see how that plays out uh, as the next few days continue. So um, moving past this wonderful sweep, uh, during which I didn't have to talk about Mickey Calloway at all, which is just great. Uh, <laughs> the Mets welcome the L.A. Dodgers to City Field. And uh, huge series this weekend. The, the, the building should be packed for all three, day, all three games. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure Matt E. Holt will complain about there being like three empty seats somewhere. And he'll say that's unacceptable for pennant race. Um, <laughs> but uh, the... The Dodgers have the NL West locked up. They clinched two days ago, or three days ago now. Um, but with the Braves playing as well as they have been, the Dodgers can't just sit back and relax because they're they're playing for the number one seed and, and home field in the NLCS if it comes to that point for them. So they're they're not going to they're not going to lay down and roll out the the B team for this series. They are going to be playing to win because so are the Braves. And as the Braves continue to play to win, um, they have the opportunity to catch the Dodgers and take the top record in the National League. And so this is why it's important for the Mets to keep this role that they've been on with Do uh, Diamondbacks going. And it's going to start and stop with the starting pitching because this series was, was only as good as it was because the bullpen didn't have to throw any important innings. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's the bottom line. If the bullpen has to be charged with getting important outs, the Mets are going to lose the game uh, more often than not. And so, you know, Mickey's job and the offense's job and the starting pitching's job is to do whatever they can collectively to keep the bullpen in the bullpen and not need to use them for more than three outs. That's, that's the bottom line here. Um, I, I really think that the Mets have a shot to at, at least realistically take two out of three from the Dodgers. It's a stretch, I know, but worst case scenario, they cannot get swept. They have to at least win one of these games, and tonight's a great opportunity for that. Um, it's a statement game that the Mets can make. Clayton Kershaw on the mound for the Dodgers against Noah Syndergaard for the Mets, and the Mets have statistically and historically always hit Kershaw well. He hasn't pitched really great at City Field. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see if the Mets can get out to an early lead tonight. And if they can take tonight's game, if the Mets can take tonight's game, they've got to then split with DeGrom and Wheeler Saturday and Sunday. I like the Mets' chances of doing just that. 
And um, so I think tonight's game is very important. Um, and we'll see what unfolds. I'll be back on Monday to talk about it. I'll be tired on Monday morning because I'm going to the game on Sunday night. At least it's Sunday night now. Um, my dad and my brother and I are going. And um, we were hoping to see DeGrom, but that wasn't in the cards. So uh, we'll see Wheeler instead, which is fine. And uh, hopefully on Monday morning I'll be talking about how great it was to experience the Mets taking two out of three um, from the Dodgers. So uh, one more quick note: I'm gonna give a uh, I'm gonna give a bitch slap to MLB, and this is not about the um, the the 9/11 first responders nonsense that we've we've seen, uh, and that frankly um, no one is gonna do a better job of in a, in a two and a half minute segment encapsulating what's terrible about this whole thing than Howie Rose did. Uh, if you haven't heard it, uh, go on Twitter, find Howie. I, actually, I think it's on Spotify and iTunes also, um, but it's out there and it's available. If you haven't heard Howie, Howie Rose talk about the uh, MLB's refusal to allow the Mets to wear first responders hats on 9-11, it's, it's absolutely worth going out and finding. But anyway, um, back to what I was just saying. Uh, it, it's it's uh, it's uh, the bitch slap to Major League Baseball is that this was a one o'clock game on the schedule from the beginning of the season, and ML, uh, ESPN took the game, and I mean MLB has to be able to refuse some of those things. I mean I know that EL, that ESPN wants to have a, a playoff uh, game type atmosphere, and you know the City Field atmosphere when it's a big game, it's pretty pretty phenomenal. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the problem with that is that after the game, the Mets have to fly cross-country to play Monday night in Colorado. And that's the sucky part about it. Like, the Mets have to have to play a game in New York until Lord knows when, and then fly to, to Colorado. And that's just, it's, an, it's unfair to ask any team to do that, and it's even more unfair to ask a team that's still in the, the, the playoff hunt. Where, you know, the team can be sleepy and it, it can cost them a game and it, the game can be really important. And imagine the difference between getting to Colorado uh, in time to have a good night's sleep versus getting to Colorado in time to get to bed before the sun rises. Because that's, that's what we're talking about here. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's a bitch that I have with MLB and I think they need to fix that somehow. I'm not sure how, but um, in any event, I will, uh, I'll be back on Monday to talk about the weekend. Uh, two out of three is my hope. Uh, I'm not going to call it. Maybe I'll call it. I'm calling it. Two out of three. The Mets are taking two out of three. That's it. I'll be back on Monday. Thanks for watching. Follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets.